Hi everyone, my name is Barbara Ramiro. I'm one of the UX designers at Moodle HQ and I've been with a company for nearly 12 years now. Um, so um, today I'll be, um, I will be showing you some of the improvements we've made to the gradebook in um, Moodle 4.1 and 4.2 followed by a sneak peek of um, um, what's coming up in Moodle 4.3 in a few weeks. But um, I don't have a screen here in front of me, so forgive me, I'll be turning my head here. But before that, let me tell you briefly about the UX processes um, at, UA, at um, HQ. The first step is um, research and user engagement. We start by conducting extensive research engaging with the community, conducting interviews and workshops to gather valuable um, insights by listening to the experiences and challenges of both new and um, seasoned Moodlers, we identify pain points and opportunities for improvements. Then comes prototyping. With a deeper understanding of user needs, we embark on the design phase, creating interactive prototypes that address the identified pain points. Then comes usability testing. This is the phase where we validate our prototypes through sessions with community members, gathering feedback to assess proposed changes and determine what works and what doesn't. And then, um, iteration and refinement. Based on the feedback from usability testing, we make modifications to our prototype. This iterative process is crucial for fine-tuning the user experience, ensuring the design is intuitive and efficient for both new and experienced users. So what did we learn from our UX process and what are the most common gradebook pain points amongst our users and what solutions did we develop? Um, and what solutions did we develop? Yeah. Okay, so we observed that um, some users felt lost due to the complexity and incons inconsistencies in the gradebook components. Um, I'm not there yet. Um, some pages had too much information that led to um, feel uh, that led to users feel overwhelmed. And um, it was at times difficult to access particular um, piece of information such as um, feedback and um, aggregation method views. Um, some common actions were tedious due to some uh, the number of steps required, such as locking and hiding rates. So what did we do to solve these problems? Firstly, we made the gradebook more approachable by introducing zero states. This is essentially the starting point that provides users with context about the page they're on and outlines the typical actions expected. This slide shows um, two examples of zero states. On the left, you see the zero state in the single view report, where a teacher can choose to uh, navigate students and grade items. On the right uh, is a zero state inviting teachers to select a user to view their individual report. We then standardize the navigation within and between the many gradebook components, the new consistent tertiary navigation makes it easier to switch between them and specific and access specific report. This shows the menu that enables teachers to switch between each gradebook component. It is consistent all throughout the pages, allowing users to quickly locate themselves and navigate where they need to go. Finding a particular user is now straightforward as teachers can directly search and select students from the navigation bar. The search term can match anything from student name, um, email address, or ID number. The same goes for groups. Teachers can search for specific groups within the navigation bar. For those of you who remember the ability to filter by the first letter of the student's first name and last name, this has also been standardized and moved to the navigation bar. Now, let's talk about the report-specific features in the navigation bar. For example, 
In the single view report, bulk actions can now be found all together within a menu at the top of the page. This provides a consistent pattern for teachers to find actions affecting the entire data set. Another example is the ability to switch between two view modes directly accessible from the navigation bar. This screen shows the toggle between viewing users or grade items in the single view report. And, um, and on this screen showing the user report, you can select uh, to view the report as yourself or as the student. And on the gradebook setup, you can add, here is where you can add grade item, outcome item, and um, category. We have also started using sticky footers, which float at the bottom of the screen and contain essential navigation patterns and actions. It contains options to set the number of records displayed per page and navigation between pages. It also includes navigation between previews and um, next items, as well as actions uh, like saving changes. <laughs> now, addressing the difficulty in accessing information, we introduce state indicators to surface and communicate important details without overwhelming users. For instance, do you know how many indicators we use to represent the various states of a student's grade? Anyone want to guess? It's actually six. So a grade can be passed or failed, hidden, locked, overridden, excluded, or whether feedback has been given. With this many, our challenge was to display this information clearly without cluttering the screen. Previously, the feedback given to students was not readily accessible. As you can imagine, there's not enough space to, put, to display potentially lengthy feedback alongside all the grades, but now, it can be read directly from the greater report as shown here. Here's another example where we communicate details about the aggregation method, empty grades, lowest grades, and grade items um, configuration. The next um, approach has multiple benefits. In order to streamline the interface, decluttering it, and reducing the potential for overwhelming teachers, while also making it easier to perform certain actions, we use what we call progressive disclosure. This is when we tuck away features until they are needed. Teachers will naturally find those uh, where needed, when needed. For instance, clicking the menu next to a category reveals options to hide or lock its grade items or edit the category. Similarly, clicking a grade items menu reveals options to change the sort order, switch to another report focusing on this grade item, lock grades, etc. And the menu next to individual grades now reveals options to edit it or quickly edit its hidden or locked state. Thanks to progressive disclosure, we were able to add more features to the screen than previously possible. You can also use the menu next to student's name to jump to another report focused on that student. At times, there can be too much information, uh, information visible, and that's where collapsing comes in handy. Remove, this, uh, remove from the screen the elements that do not require your attention and focus on what does. On the grader report, grade items can be collapsed using the menu I showed previously. When collapsed, the columns will take minimal horizontal space, making it easier to navigate through large grade books. It will also remember which columns were previously collapsed. Collapsed columns can be managed from the navigation bar, allowing you to expand them individually or all together. 
Collapsing categories has additional options like keeping the categories category totals and hiding all its um, hiding all the grades it contains or vice versa. In the gradebook setup, categories can be collapsed as well as in the user report. So, as I've shown you, there's been quite a few improvements in gradebook, but wait, there's more. There's more to come in um, 4.3, and here's a quick preview. In the gradebook setup, as Matt uh, presented the other day, creating and editing items will be quicker and more straightforward. A simplified, uh, simplified form will be presented within the gradebook setup with advanced settings available separately. This applies to grade items, outcome items, and grade categories. Moving items around when setting up the gradebook will also become more efficient as multiple items can be selected and moved at once. That's it for me, and I hope you've enjoyed this short and fast presentation, and I hope I could make you appreciate our constant efforts to make challenging Moodle more approachable and easier to use for everyone. Thank you. So, any question? Hi, thank you for your uh, uh, introduction to the new and improved gradebook. I was wondering if you have anything planned for something a bit crazy uh, for grade calculation options. Um, the formula work is uh, a hassle. You have to have a PhD in mathematics to be able to do that. Uh, and we have quite a few uh, faculty members, teachers who work with a like nonlinear grade progression where they set assessments to have a passing grade of 6 out of 10 at achieving 80% or higher score. Try to build that in a manual grade item. Uh, that would be a really excellent uh, addition to a grade book improvement, but I don't know if you have something like that in the pipeline. Well, <laughs> I can tell you something about the good news and the bad news. The good okay. news is we started the research some time ago, probably maybe four months ago, and we did um, interview some uh, uh, teachers from the University of Otago, and I hope they don't mind me mentioning it, but it's not a secret. We've done the initial research. We've interviewed them, and we've, we've seen some crazy, crazy calculations that it looks like matrix to me. It was my first time to see crazy calculations like that. But um, I hope Brett is here to answer that question. Uh, but we are aware of it. That's all I can say. I don't want to make um, promises just, just because it's more of a business decision. And so, yeah, I just hope Brett is here to answer it. <laughs> 